Hello, everyone. It is the top of the hour. I'm looking, and people are still joining, but I think we'll get started with introductions, and then um, everybody should be connected. So welcome, everybody, to today's Open Library Community Forum. Um, the forum is sponsored by Open Library Environment, EBSCO, and Index Data. I will be your host today. I'm Sharon Wiles-Young, Director of Library Access Services at Lehigh University. Um, Lehigh is one of the three libraries currently running OLE as our ILS. Today's forum will be a discussion about the community sourcing development, specifically looking at Folio Special Interest Groups, or SIGs. Today's forum is also being recorded and will be available on the Open Library Environment website. All the participants are encouraged to ask questions in the question box. Please place those questions there. Participants can see the submitted questions, um, but we have all participants muted to ensure our good sound quality for today. Please feel free to use uh, Twitter, um, hashtag Folio Forum, and be aware that we might not see your questions and comments during the forum, so we encourage you to put questions in the box. We also encourage you to continue this conversation on today's topic at Folio Discussion website, discuss.folio.org. The host, me, and others will be monitoring questions from the question box, so please feel free, free to enter questions at any time. Now I'm happy to introduce our four speakers today. We have four library leaders today, and uh, our first speaker will be Peter Murray, who is the open source community advocate at Index Data. Peter is responsible for promoting awareness of Folio and reaching out to stakeholders to collaborate and discuss library technology. Peter has held several library technology positions in academic libraries and consortia and is active in NISO and other library organizations. Dracene Hodges is the assistant libra university librarian for technical services at Duke University Libraries. Previously, Dracene was the head of acquisitions at Ohio State University Library. Currently, Dracene is serving as the chair of the Olay Community Product Council. Our next speaker would be Kristen Wilson. Is She is the Associate Head of Acquisitions and Discovery at North Carolina State University Libraries. She manages the department serials unit and has been involved in the development of a local electronic resources management system and the global open knowledge base, GOKB. She has published on the topics of knowledge bases, electronic resource management, and workflow analysis in journals such as Serials Review and Library Resources and Technical Services. Kristen Martin is the electronic resource management librarian at the University of Chicago and has been an active contributor to the Olay project. She heads the electronic resource management department, which is responsible for acquisitions, workflows, and processes for e-resources from selection to access. She has previously experienced um, in managing and cataloging electronic resources at the University of Illinois at Chicago and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Currently, Kristen is the convener of the Folio Resource Management Special Interest Group. Now I'd like to um, turn our uh, program over to Peter. Um, let's see if I can uh, get the presenter rights to Peter. Yep, if you pass me the WebEx ball, I'll go. Yes, I will. There you go. All right. Uh, and let me share
Let me share my screen. Okay, um, thank you for that welcome, and uh, let me add my welcome to today's uh, Folio Forum on Special Interest Groups and how you can get involved in the Folio Project. In some respects, uh, we thought of this forum as a part two after Harry Kaplanian's uh, Folio Roadmap Forum from last month. Uh, and if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to take a look at the recording on the Open Library Environment website. Uh, the URL is at the bottom here. Uh, in fact, I, I have a bit of the historical perspective in the presentation today. So uh, my slides uh, have several URLs that point to places in the Folio project uh, where you can get more details. Um, so you uh, may want to have your uh, pen and, and paper handy to copy those down. Uh, if Harry's roadmap forum got you excited about uh, Folio's potential to improve services at your library, then today's forum is for you. Uh, as the open source community advocate at Index Data, I've been receiving many requests from people about how they can join the project. Uh, and I'll bet my colleagues on the forum today have received much the same as part of their leadership roles in the project. Uh, and, and this is what is making Folio such an exciting project. Uh, if there were just two axioms about open source, uh, they would be uh, first that the project is nothing without active developers, uh, and then second that the project is nothing without a healthy community of users. Uh, so even if your software development skills uh, are not among your talents, uh, your experience and vision and passion for better tools for libraries are key to a successful folio project. Uh, the special interest groups or SIGs are one way the project channels that enthusiasm uh, to propel folio forward. This is the agenda for today's talk. Uh, at the end, uh, the, the goal at the end is to have answered your questions uh, about how to get involved in Folio to make the capabilities of the software match your needs uh, and vision for your library. Uh, to do this, we're going to first step back a little bit and bring everyone up to speed on how we got to this point. Um, I'll take that part, uh, and then my colleagues will outline uh, how we envision the SIGs will drive Folio's design and development. Uh, we'll go into detail about one SIG that has been very active so far, the, the resource management SIG, uh, and then conclude with how you can keep track of what's happening with the project and get involved yourself. Uh, today's forum uh, is about 90 minutes long, and between the four of us, we think we'll talk for about an hour. Uh, this is a one-way audio conference uh, and the channel for you to communicate your questions and ideas to the group uh, is the Q&A box uh, in the WebEx window. Uh, so as Sharon said, uh, please use that to ask your questions uh, and post your ideas as they come to you uh, in the course of the presentation. Uh, and our team of forum facilitators uh, will track those and queue them up for us at the end of the uh, presentation material. Uh, so with that, uh, let's get started. From Folio's early days, we thought that the, we thought it should be a development project where the user experience drives the system design. Uh, 
uh, and by iterating in a loop between uh, user experience exploration and user, exp user interface design and software development, we could efficiently and effectively build the system that we need. Uh, if you're interested in hearing more about this approach, uh, I encourage you to review this earlier Folio Forum uh, by Philip Jacobson. Uh, I believe this design philosophy is at the heart of what we're doing uh, and that everything else, uh, the concepts of apps on a platform uh, and buzzwords like microservices and RESTful interfaces and so forth, uh, everything else comes from that user experience design concept. Uh, it is, even with just a couple of months of hindsight at this point, uh, easy to say that uh, this was the intention all, all along, uh, but the reality is that projects are never this cut and dried uh, at the start, uh, particularly with a project uh, that has such diverse interests uh, from the Olay libraries and EBSCO and index data and other service providers, uh, each with their own needs and goals. Uh, the reality is uh, a little messier. To get the project started, a team gathered through the summer to work through a list of functions that, we, that were needed to have a workable system. Uh, there were over 150 line items on this list. Um, and through the discussion, uh, the needs of various libraries were clarified and consolidated and grouped into functional areas. This was a huge effort to come to a common understanding of what library automation systems were, uh, what they needed to become, and even some of what we would like them to be. Uh, the effort was called the functional review or functional matrix review, uh, and it covered at a high level many of the functions that a library needs to do. Although I don't think this work was intended to work out this way, uh, it was through this discussion about the functional matrix items that Philip became grounded in the library world uh, and the functional matrix review group became the sounding board for refining Philip's concept drawings of what the system will look like. The functional matrix review was one component of a larger process that uh, included uh, in-depth interviews with library staff, uh, and observations about how they used their library's current automation system. Uh, from the functional matrix review and the interviews, uh, Philip created the first sketches of what's becoming Folio. And if you haven't seen those first sketches yet, uh, here's another Folio Forum presentation that I uh, would encourage you, or I, I would encourage you to go back to Philip's uh, Folio Forum presentation uh, that I mentioned earlier, uh, and then come back to this page on discuss.folio.org uh, to learn how to experience that prototype for yourself. Uh, in case you missed that uh, earlier URL to Philip's presentation, uh, if you come to this page on Discuss, uh, it's here, listed here near the center of this post. At this point in the process, it became clear that the functional matrix group had gone about as far as it could go. Uh, it had documentation on the high-level needs of the various functional areas of the system. Uh, and to advance the project further, more subject matter experts uh, would need to join the group uh, to provide more depth and context to the requirements. Uh, the functional matrix group itself would then become too big to effectively manage the number of people and the amount of work that would need to be done. 
at about this same time, the Product Council was forming to spearhead the community engagement parts of the project. Uh, the functional matrix team came to Product Council with a request to divide itself into four groups based on the functional areas it had explored. And the Product Council took this opportunity to build the framework for community engagement going forward in the project. Uh, so to continue this journey with the role of the Product Council and the vision for the special interest groups, I'm going to pass the presentation over to Dracine Hodges from uh, Duke University and Chair of the Product Council. Thank you, Peter. And let me see how I can pass the ball to you. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, can you see my screen now? I can see that. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, hello to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, again, my name is Dracine Hodges, and I am the current chair of the Olay Community Product Council. And um, for all intents and purposes, the role of the Product Council ha um, is basically uh, a group of representatives to serve as a voice of the OLA community. Um, we also do uh, coordination of activities as needed um, and champion priorities uh, during the development process. The council is comprised sorry, of a representative from each OLA partner um, as a benefit of membership. So if you saw the previous screen, it gives you an idea of the institutions that are currently represented on that group. Uh, so as Peter mentioned earlier, one of the um, guiding factors for the Product Council is the Folio Roadmap. And this roadmap is basically the way, the way I like to think of it is as the North Star, in a, in a way, um, for the Product Council in terms of thinking about the goals and deliverables for the application development. And it's broken down into, I guess, quarterly objectives. So I would really encourage um, any of you who did not get to attend um, that presentation, which was given by Harry Kaplanian, um, who is um, with EBSCO, to seek it out, and it will probably help provide even more context for um, any other presentations that you per participate in related to Folio and the SIG. So what is the SIG? Um, SIG is essentially a special interest group. It is um, a forum that brings together librarians, developers, other potential users to essentially brainstorm and even debate aspects of the folio functionality. Um, the approaches and outcomes of these activities vary according to the topic. Um, the work of these groups or the SIGs can guide, can do everything from guide workflow development or produce a white paper that might add to the professional literature. So the SIG, the scope of SIGs can vary, but it's largely dependent, I think, on the dynamic of the group and the, the things that are trying to be accomplished in those discussions. Um, okay, so if you're looking at this, this is, uh, I guess, a high-level <laughs> um, view of the way I sort of look, at, think about the SIGs. 
Um, behind the scenes, we even refer to the product council itself as the SIG of SIGs, um, if that helps sort of contextualize things. But after the preliminary work that was completed by the UX, UI, and functional matrix groups, um, as Peter indicated, certain functional areas were identified as being a priority for folio development and needing expert input. So those areas being the, the, the four SIGs you see named in this slide, so that's the metadata management, resource access, user management, and resource management. Um, we tried to name each functional SIG in a way that all of the partner communities understood their meaning, because some terms mean one thing to librarians and another to software developers. So we tried to come up with language that was consistent and um, understandable for all of the different uh, groups involved. So starting with the metadata management SIG, this SIG, obviously, uh, primary concern is bibliographic data and its management. This group, we would like this group to explore the different schemas that are in play today and determine critical data elements. Obviously, they would also need to consider the interoperability of this, of metadata and its harmonization in, inside of the folio environment. Of course, the role and use of vendor metadata will need to be considered in this context as well. Um, in addition, this, this SIG would focus on data, data interchangeability as a key component for greater interlibrary cooperation through concepts like linked data, for instance. The resource access SIG um, will be looking at circulation functions. And this includes baseline components like patron types, loan types, fines, recalls, holds. Um, this group will also advise developers on the paramount capacity for resource sharing. We all know that this is you know, a cornerstone of the work that libraries do and of the services that are offered. Um, so we want to have that capacity for resource sharing via whatever models are in play, like ILL or perhaps a shared consortial ebook collection. So we want to be able to take the time to consider what the models are or what those possibilities um, might be. So the user management SIG is specifically focused on authentication and authorization systems or the way I like to think of it as gatekeeping, um, that must be integrated into Folio. This obviously would include um, permissions and access alongside protocols related to um, personal, to privacy and personal data, because those are, you know, very important and under a lot of scrutiny, particularly today um, in the, the environment that we work in. And I will talk briefly about the resource management SIG because um, Kristen Martin and Kristen Wilson will be talking a little bit more in depth about that. But um, the resource management SIG, I will quickly say, evolved from the previous group um, that Peter mentioned earlier and has focused on what we have referred to as the business operations in some ways that relate to the functions of acquiring and managing all types of materials, um, looking at relationships and workflows um, that are internal and external. So the PC, the Product Council, anticipates discussions and issues that will, um, particularly related to this SIG's work that will cross over into other SIGs. But, you know, in an effort to not be prescriptive about the work, we want that to, to happen organically. Um, so the business operations, you know, tend to include everything from fund structures, orders, receiving, licensing, um, and, you know, tools for evaluation and reporting, statistics, those types of things. So I will stop talking and hand off to Kristen Wilson. One second.
Okay. Thanks, Tracy. Um, and let me know if there's any issues with uh, visuals or sound. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the resource management SIG and really try to give the perspective of what type of work is the SIG doing, how are we working together across different institutions, and what is it like to be a participant in a SIG. Um, and since resource management is really, it was the first SIG that got started, and it's the one that has been the most active so far, I think it provides a good template for the ways that a SIG can evolve and the type of work that we can do. So um, the resource management SIG actually was started up really early in the Folio project um, back in April of this year. And it was actually started even before the UX team that Peter talked about, I think mainly because there was a, an acknowledgement that resource management, acquisitions, um, all of that was a really critical part of this project, and we had a really strong group of people who could work in that area. So we started with a, a kind of a big kickoff meeting in Copenhagen, which is where a number of the index data folks are based. And so that was exciting to get to go to Copenhagen and also to kind of be there for the start of this project. And um, I will say, I think at the beginning, we really, none of us knew exactly what to expect. Um, the meeting had been kind of coordinated with Olay and Index Data, but what we ended up doing was working with Jacob Jaskoff, who's a consultant and a futurist, to kind of explore the whole research life cycle and how that relates to resource management. And so um, don't worry about trying to read this diagram here. It's more um, designed as just a, an example of how complex and how big was the scope of what we were talking about at this point. So we kind of explored all these different areas that ranged from things like um, faculty research engagement and big data and open access kind of trends in scholarly communication and what was going on there. We did focus some on, you know, library and staff needs, so things like um, community sourcing data using a central knowledge base to help manage data across institutions, um, the need for workflow tools, the, all those kinds of things. So trends that we saw happening that were either affecting the whole resource space um, from a user perspective or from an internal library perspective. And so um, that resulted in this diagram and some other work done by Jacob Jaskoff, which um, was actually also the subject of a previous Folio forum. So you can go and find out more information about that if you're interested in seeing this in more detail. And so um, after the Copenhagen meeting, I think at that point, you know, that was kind of our first time coming together, and then we really had to say, okay, as a as a group, as a, and you know, I don't even think we were calling ourselves a SIG at that point. We were just kind of a resource management community input group. You know, how do we take what we did at this meeting and evolve it into an ongoing structure and start to tie it into the more practical side of the project. And around the same time, the user experience team that Peter talked about was also starting up. And so um, we kind of let them do their work, see, trying to see how that played out. And also the product council was starting up and starting to put some more structure into this. So it took a little while before I think we really felt like we had uh, the stability to kind of start meeting regularly and start having some regular discussions. But we were able to do that. We now have a regular resource management call that's on Friday mornings. We've got a space on the wiki. We've kind of got that all up and running. And we just got um, Kristen Martin agreeing to be our official convener. So all the structure is starting to come into place. And one of the things that that has entailed is really trying to narrow down what we're doing to define our scope and to, to really tie this into functionality that will be part of a library management system. So um, our charge, we've really tried to narrow it down to a lot of these library functions that people will be pretty familiar with. So things like funds, ordering, licensing, access, renewals, evaluation, um, all of those are now part of our official charge for the group. And these are the types of functionalities that we're going to be working on developing. Um, 
But that said, I think we're also trying to be conscious of not losing sight of that big picture work that we did in Copenhagen with Jacob and with the initial RM team, because I do think there's a lot of valuable insights that came out of that that will be things that need to factor into these parts of Folio, maybe not immediately, but as, we, as the product gets established and goes farther down the road. So some of those, um, those things include uh, concepts like, you know, researcher needs, um, you know, how do researchers discover things? Do they want to work with big data? Um, all of that type of thing, making sure that we at least have that on our minds so that we're developing a system that, that can be visionary about the future. And to be totally honest right now, I don't actually know what, what that means in terms of concrete functionality. It's just something that we know is important. And so um, one, I guess the one example of the type of thing that we're thinking about is, you know, what can, what does a library manage and what does a library make discoverable to its users? And right now, a lot of what a library manages is things that it purchases with maybe some open access resources that are considered important to include in a collection. But um, a lot of that does still fall into the category of books and journals, maybe some media, audio, video type things, maybe some data sets. And we could maybe see that going even further with more different types of resources that we actually want to manage in Folio. So maybe things like um, works in progress that researchers are working on and want to share with the community, um, the annotations and reviews, um, kind of like collaborative data sets, all, you know, all kinds of things, things we probably don't even know what they are yet, but how can a library manage those things as well as the traditional resources? And then how can we make those discoverable? How can we make them discoverable at the right level? You know, maybe there's things that researchers want to share within a certain community or that they want to share completely publicly. So there, there's that whole area of work. And then there's also on the staff side, you know, the idea that there's a lot of things that libraries manage that are global, that, you know, are the same across all libraries. So that might be, you know, the name and address of a certain vendor, or it might be the contents of a JSTOR package that's always the same, no matter who buys it. Um, and it might be a set of bib records for eBooks, and there's really not, you know, a lot that's going to be different institution to institution. And how can we use some kind of central knowledge base or central data management platform to share the load of managing global work um, while letting people customize the things that need to be customized? So that's another kind of like big picture goal that we want to make sure as we develop these more traditional functions, we're keeping things open and extensible enough that we can start pulling in some of these more um, interesting and new ideas. So that's been a big topic for discussion of discussion for us so far. Um, another thing that I will mention is that I do think our work really reflects the organic nature of this project. Um, and I think that that nature is very deliberate in some ways. Um, the idea is kind of to let the community come together and to see like what floats to the top and what what crystallizes into something that could be a really productive working group. So resource management was an early one, but the work of the product council and the UX team have really started to identify some of those other areas. And then within each group too, I think certain ideas, certain needs are again starting to come together and crystallize, but it is very, um, much coming out of the work of these groups, and really, I would say at this point, not so much coming from a top-down perspective. And so that's been an interesting um, experience to work on that project. Um, sometimes it involves, you know, what a, a coworker of mine used to call the thrashing stage, where you just kind of don't exactly know what you're doing, and you have to, the work is actually figuring that out, and I think we've been doing a lot of that, but we are starting to see the structure crystallize now. So I'll talk a little bit about what we've been doing most recently, which is that we, um, a number of the members of the resource management group met 
at MIT to do a two-day workshop with Philip Jacobson, who is our designer for the project. And we also got to see this lovely view of the Charles River. Um, but really the goal of the workshop was to take some of these areas that we've identified as the, the actual functionality we're going to be developing for Folio and really start to take a deep dive into them to help Philip as a designer understand our needs and to start kind of breaking out, you know, what do we actually want to work on developing. And so uh, to start the workshop, we did some sharing of workflows. Um, the participants brought in some example workflows and kind of talked through them. Things like purchasing a new journal, purchasing a new ebook, renewing a journal package, typical types of acquisitions and resource management type workflows. And then we attempted to map these out into kind of everything that we did. And so, you know, in some cases, it was challenging because you're breaking things down into continuing resources versus one-time purchases, first-time purchases versus renewals, and then maintenance. And then there's also uh, functionality that might not be an everyday part of the workflows, but it kind of underlies those workflows. So things like fund management and encumbrances and you know, the, sh the financial structure that is beneath everything. So um, it was pretty challenging, uh, but I think we did a good job of just kind of throwing it all out there, the things that we know we need to talk about. Um, then we started to break down these workflows and these processes into more of uh, features. So Phyllis, Philip had us do some exercises where we sort of uh, took a, a process so it could be something like a renewal of a continuing resource or a purchase of a monograph and kind of break down these are the major processes involved and that's kind of across the top and then for each of those what are specific features and functions that I need to do like for example I need to create a purchase order and I need to enter the price of this resource into that purchase order, I need that to encumber funds, you know, so sort of getting into the details a little bit more. And this produced a ton of post-it notes, um, and we tried to actually kind of pull them all together, or at least the processes where there were commonalities. So, you know, there's, of course, differences between purchasing a monograph and a serial, but maybe you still need a purchase order for both, and maybe you still need an invoice for both. And so there's kind of major things where the workflows are similar, and then there's the little differences. And then there are things like renewals where we found that that really was kind of its own workflow. So um, there's a lot of intellectual work of just trying to figure out what, it, what are the things that we need to address. And then we tried to boil everything down into this kind of core feature diagram of these are the things we know we need to um, have the system do. So selection, that was something we didn't talk about as much in detail, but it's kind of a starting point and something that we know that uh, we will want Folio to support at some point. Um, that flows into a series of processes that all kind of happen in a, in a concurrent way and can be different not just institution to institution, but even within the same institution, depending on the type of purchase or depending on the individual purchase. But um, we identified processes of purchase and ordering, access setup, payment, and licensing, and those can all kind of happen together. And then for one-time purchases, there are some flows specific to that, usually coming to an end. And then for continuing resources, there's this whole renewal process which usually involves a lot of decision-making review, and then that kind of flows back around to your initial processes, and you may need to repeat some or all of those processes as you do your renewal, and that can kind of flow endlessly until you decide not to renew at some point. So um, that gave us kind of an overall view of um, the work that, or the functionality that we were gonna be looking at. So as for next steps for the resource management team, Philip is going to be taking all of the work that we did from our workshop, and he's going to now be starting to actually create designs for interfaces and screens and workflows within Folio, and he'll be sharing them with our group for feedback.
And one thing about this that's pretty interesting is that it's very much a user-focused process. So um, the, the work of creating the system will actually start with the design and user feedback and then go to the developers for technical feedback. So it's not starting with the technical, it's starting with the, the end user perspective, which I think will be really interesting to see how that works. Uh, we'll also be figuring out how to make our team work. Um, we've actually, as the, the team has grown, we've got a, maybe a couple dozen people who have expressed interest in the work of this team. And we really can't have, you know, 25 people coming to a WebEx every single week. It's a lot to ask of people, and it's kind of overwhelming for that environment. So we're going to be starting to think about how we can break into smaller, more focused teams where, you know, maybe each week we can pull together three or four or five people who have a specific expertise or a specific interest in a topic for a discussion, and then that can help fill up with his design work, and then we'll see about, you know, maybe trying to do some full group updates periodically. And we've also talked about potential for future face-to-face -face meetings, and that's a little bit up in the air right now, though I imagine we'll be able to work something out at some point. Uh, one thing I will say is that, you know, participation in these teams can range from sort of following following the online discussion, maybe offering some opinions on Slack. Um, it can be participating in calls sometimes, and then it can be really in-depth participation like some of us have been doing, and that really comes from an institutional commitment to the Folio project. So those libraries who are part of Olay, you know, that, they, that membership in Olay kind of signifies that deeper commitment. And then there's issues of funding for travel and that type of thing. And that does come a lot from either the institutions or from Olay to support its members. And so if, there, if the traveling or being at present at meetings is something that people are interested in, that's something where you really need to make sure you do have that institutional backing. But we also want to make sure that there are more lightweight ways to participate so that people have those options as well. Um, so at this point, I will turn things over to Kristen Martin, and she's going to talk a little bit about more about the RM team and then about getting involved with the SIGs in general. All right, if you want to just pass me the ball, great. Let me share my screen. So, some of these things Kristen's already covered, um, but I'm going to go through more of a logistical idea of what SIG membership has been like to help people understand, you know, what you might be getting into if you do want to get more involved, and then just help people understand, like, who is involved in the project so far to date. So, like Kristen said, our membership has really grown organically in the resource management experience, and especially since we kind of started before there even were SIGs. Um, and I think our membership can be broken into some categories. We've got um, user interface and designer experts. Uh, we have developers and sort of um, project analysts from Index Data. Uh, we've also been able to get some industry experts from different organizations to come in. And then um, what I would consider Kristen and I to be like the subject matter experts or the functional experts who are working in libraries and doing this sort of work daily. Um, communicating across our group has been something that's also been evolving organically. And there are some different places that I would recommend people can go to keep track of things. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to jump over to our um, resource management wiki. I have a link in the slide, but um, th there is a wiki for Folio, and then we have a page on it for resource management where you can see members of our team. Um, there are documents including, although kind of a, a fuzzy PDF of that um, workflow, as well as if you wanted to look further at Jacob's document about um, the research user journey map. Um, information about our meetings are here, and then we also have a page for our meeting agenda and notes. So this has been the communication channel that we've used the most, uh, and I expect that we're going to be probably increasing our use of some of the other communication channels, which include um, the Folio discuss page, 
Uh, and so here we can post information about um, different documents that are created. Philip can share uh, any design bytes that he's created for resource management. And, um, and this is where you can also talk about the data model. And it's a way to provide asynchronous discussion on you know, a particular position paper or information. So all of this may seem a little daunting in terms of the communication spaces. And Peter, um, I keep coming back to this great page that he's created on the wiki, has mapped out some of the communication tools that are out there, how you can get signed up, because these are open. Uh, you know, we, we aren't like preventing people from signing up. If you want to sign up and get more or less information, you can get a, an account for the wiki. You can get an account on Discuss. Um, we also have been using Slack just sort of nascently in the resource management team, but I expect that this will be increasing. And, um, and we, have, we do have a, um, an email list that we've been using for some communication as well. And again, I can provide information about signing up for that, but um, some of these other tools are good ways to get started. Go back to the slide. So there was, a, there was an actual um, forum that Peter did early on where he walked through some of the communication tools, if you'd like to see it in more of a, uh, a graphical way, as well as just walking through that visualization page. So Kristen talked a little bit about what our experience has been to date and what kind of time commitment you might expect. Um, you know, we've so far, we've had two in-person meetings which hasn't involved everybody on the team. And I think one of the things that we're going to have to realize is, you know, not everybody will necessarily be at every meeting, especially as the size of our team might grow. Uh, we do have a weekly meeting, um, which is indicated on the wiki. And that's been at 8.30 Eastern on Fridays, which, you know, is maybe a difficult time for some people. And so we've been struggling a little bit with how to manage the multiple time zones that stretch across the United States as well as Europe. And so I would say nothing is set in stone there. Um, and we are also thinking that we may be breaking this, uh, this meeting structure up into these smaller, more specialized groups. And then we would have maybe a, a larger meeting periodically to, um, have people check in. So th that's going to be something that I think, again, is going to be an organic process that we'll be developing, we'll be communicating through the wiki, through Discuss. Um, and our work is really designed to support that folio roadmap that you've heard about earlier and then the developer timetable. So if we need to have a future in-person meeting, it's going to be for a specific purpose um, going forward. So this is all I know may feel overwhelming if you're just trying to step into this project and you're looking at all these different ways. And I think you can think about what, um, what level of commitment you might be interested in if you do want to join. Um, and we uh, who are already involved in the project are kind of trying to weigh like how, how do we be completely open while still being um, able to move forward on the project and accomplish things in a, in a timely way. So it, it's, still a, it's still a balancing act that we're trying to figure out. So any of the SIGs might be seeking functional experts for long-term commitments. There may be specific short-term expertise that we need. Um, you don't have to be from an OLA institution to work on a SIG. That's not a requirement at all. The Product Council is made up of OLA institutions to help coordinate the work, but it's not, um, the SIGs are not exclusive groups. However, we do recommend you, you would talk to your institution about what level of involvement you might want to commit to. If there might be um, the potential for travel, is that something that you could do? Would it be okay for you to be spending a couple hours a week on meetings and potentially time outside of those meetings um, preparing documentation or reading and responding to ideas? So um, those are things that you would want to be mindful of. And then thinking about like what's your specialty and what's your interest. Uh, Dracene talked through the four SIGs that are getting started, but I'm going to go through some other areas that may be growing. So if you want to really just stay informed, um, you could read the minutes, which will be posted on the wiki for all the SIGs. 
Uh, you can join some of the communication channels just to get updates. Uh, you can join Slack and you don't have to post anything on it. You can just kind of see what's been new. You can look at what's new on Discuss. Discuss will send you email updates if you need them. Um, and then uh, I put some links in here for the Folio forums that give some general project updates. If you, the roadmap, which has been mentioned before, is really critical. And if you're interested more on the code side, you can also um, take a look at what the code is to see where that is. Now, maybe none of these SIGs really fit your interest, and there are more SIGs and there's some more information about this on the wiki under the Product Council that, that may be coming. So, you know, we've talked about, do we need a scholarly communication SIG? You saw that the resource management team started off with this very broad objective and it was really talking about the research project and how the library can support it. Um, now we've narrowed it down more towards, you know, business operations acquisitions, but we don't want to lose sight of that. So that may be spun off from our SIG and be informing our work. Uh, we've talked about managing users, accessibility, requirements analysis, teaching and learning support, um, consortial support, as well as um, internationalization. And I see my Slack channel is like popping up things. Uh, so I thought I'd close that, but it popped back up again. Uh, and in terms of how SIGs are started, they may come from an existing SIG. Uh, the Product Council also is looking for any gaps or areas that need to be filled. And additionally, they can come from a ground up, what we were calling kind of birds of a feather, um, where you can, people could get together, whether you're on Slack or you're just talking amongst yourselves or it's a subset of, of people on the project that say, you know what, this is an area that we don't have any coverage for. And so we feel like we need to have some coverage on this and you can come together, um, propose a SIG, or just talk about things and then realize that some sort of development work needs to be done. So this is definitely organic. It's designed to be a little more flexible than maybe what we're used to thinking. Um, but we do have this framework of the roadmap, and we do have these existing SIGs that are trying to look at things. I mean, another example is thinking about the data model that's going to underline Folio. That's going to be sort of cross-dimensional between metadata management, between resource management. So that may be a portion of one of the larger SIGs that may end up becoming its own SIG. And we just kind of have to see how that develops. So that was my last slide. Um, and we kept it slightly under an hour, but we wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. So there is a question box in the WebEx where you can type any questions. Hopefully we've answered some of them along the way. Thank you, Kristen. Um, please, yeah, ask your questions. I, I have a question for you, Kristen, both of the Kristens on resource management. Um, how, how are you envisioning when uh, functionality, can you split down groups to look at certain functionality? Is that how you're thinking about working when we have so many different areas as you showed in your posted notes and um, of how to address things and get back to the developers quickly? Um, well, I can take a first crack. So I think what Philip would like to do is provide some design bytes to support different workflows. So when we met in Boston, we were talking about, like, this is a workflow for a one-time monographic purchase. So how would we support that? And then when we were talking about renewals, we started thinking about all of the things that you might need in advance of renewals. Like, you need to have some sort of uh, fund management. You need to have a, an ability to budget, you need to have an ability to roll over from year to year, you need to be able to encumber. And so that might be another area that we break off. Um, we identified some things that are, are, could, might be more easily chunked, like if you're dealing with serials, check in for print serials, that doesn't really affect other resources. Um, trying to manage troubleshooting could be another area that, that we would also identify that doesn't really even fall as much into the acquisitions workflow, but needs to have support from the system. Yeah, and I think the other thing that we don't, we just don't know right now is exactly how these groups will go long term. But I could see, I mean, there's, you know, one potential model is that we form formal subgroups. So it's like we need a licensing subgroup and we get a few people together 
Um, and then, then as licensing related design comes up, that's a group of people who can give feedback, who can make suggestions and work with, fill up and, and you know, help that process along. Um, I could see just based on the organic nature of the project in general, you know, it, if whether or not we even need to formalize those groups. Like maybe it's just sort of from week to week, it's like, okay, Philip's working on fund management this week. Let's just get five people who are experts in fund management who are available this Friday and they come together and maybe the next time we talk about it, it's not the exact same group. Um, so I think that's going to be something that evolves like as we actually start doing the work. But we haven't really seen any of the design bites yet. So I think the, the real test will be like once these things start coming out and figuring out which of those things works best. Oh, thank you. That's great. Okay, we have a couple questions. Is there a OPAC public access layer SIG or would which would be most appropriate for librarians who want to give input on user features? Well, creating um, the public interface is actually not on the roadmap. I think we see this as working with existing interfaces or um, discovery systems and not necessarily having its own. But um, I could certainly see if there's enough individuals who feel like they want to have their own interface built as part of the, the Folio suite as an app, then that could be something that gets started. Thank you. Um, any other comments on that one? Okay. I added my name to the metadata management sign up Google Doc. What should I expect now? So I know there are sign ups. Um, uh, does anyone want to address uh, how we are communicating? Sure. Uh, this is Dracene. So I will just say that we actually have a meeting, uh, the Product Council has a meeting tomorrow with the conveners of the, the, the four SIGs we've been discussing. And we expect, or at least I expect, that we will come up with a plan for how to kick off those individual groups, either by having a communication from the Product Council or either allowing or letting rather the convener be the um, person to reach out and let people know that, you know, the group is moving forward and maybe setting up a first meeting to, you know, cover some ground rule conversations about how they want to interact um, based on, you know, some of the examples that the Christians provided earlier. Um, and I guess I would add just at the end here, we did give contact information for Peter and Dracene. If you right now are, you know, not on a SIG and you think that this is something that you'd like to be interested in, um, you can contact either one of them, um, particularly for, for SIGs. I think Dracene as the product council chair might be able to get you in touch with the right people. Uh, right. You know, I, I'm the convener for resource management, so you are welcome to contact me directly, but the other ones, all that information is still being formed and shared, so um, we can make sure we get you in touch with the right people. Right. That's great. And, of course, all the resources you've all pointed out, um, the wiki um, and the discuss, that's also another place to look at what's going and plug in and see where you want to be. Very helpful. Okay. Another question is, what model of ILS LSP is this project likely to offer? One that competes with a shared cooperative database in the cloud, a la WorldCat, or the model of, of a site having their own database of bib items, records for local use and maintenance? kind of the model for our thinking of. Shall I try that one? That would be great, Peter. The, uh, the, the model is uh, one of a hybrid. Um, there's recognition that uh, there are knowledge bases atop of knowledge bases uh, that either intersect at a consortial level 
um, or they intersect uh, because there is a shared uh, uh, electronic resource subscription uh, and and so the the uh, the model and that's that's uh, hand that, that's being discussed in the the uh, resource management uh, group uh, right now. There's a uh, a post that uh, is on uh, discuss dot folio dot org, uh, which starts to talk about that model. Um, it it there's there's a great deal of flexibility in there right now. Uh, so I wouldn't want to pigeonhole it uh, into one uh, uh, mindset or another, uh, other than to say that it's it's likely that uh, both those scenarios and and a combination of other scenarios are possible. Thank you. Any other comments on that? Okay. Um, so how is the development of the resource sharing module progressing? Do they mean resource management? Is that? Well, we have a resource um, access, um, SIG, that would be talking more about things like circulation and um, interlibrary loan and borrowing. I don't know if that's what they're after when they're talking about resource sharing. That's good, yes. So we do have a SIG that will be addressing that as well as um, all the other modules. So I think what we could say in this question is when Peter started out with the functional matrix, that's how we started parsing off some of the finite, I mean the functional matrix of where um, things would go and then we started these SIGs. So that's that's how we're progressing right now um, to work on functionality. Um, has any sort of informal group started to form around interinstitutional services consortia? So that um, that's one of the SIGs that I identified near the end as uh, as an area of need. Um, and we have not, it has not officially convened or been formed yet, but it is kind of on the list. Right, it, it is on the list. I think, um, you know, one of the the challenges with that type of SIG that the product council has discussed is what model would, would they, would we be pursuing? Because um, if you look at the representation of um, the institutions having on the, the product council itself or who are currently a part of the Olay partner community, they're all a part of consortia, members of consortia, and each of those consortia um, look very different and have different um, models that they are using. So I think we have to think, um, be really thoughtful about that thing and what we would be pers pursuing um, with it. So. It's on the list. We have awareness that it, there's a need for it, but I, I don't think we're, we, we've um, gotten to a point where we are ready to launch one. Great. Um, I just wanted to go back to the previous question. Uh, it was uh, the, the participant who asked the question was referring to interlibrary loans, so that would be our resource access. SIG, um, and uh, you can find that um, on our wiki there. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions coming in? I think we've, we've answered most of the questions, and I have to just stress um, how much good information um, was given today on how to get into information about our SIGs and about our project. Um, there is also all the recordings, um, especially the roadmap and then to follow up with this SIG um, at the openlibraryenvironment.org uh, site. So you can go back and um, follow our, 
our um, recordings to see all this good information. And I think this SIG followed up well after the roadmap discussion because this is exactly what we'll be doing with functionality into a structure. So, um, Sharon, yes, I do see one more question about um, the yes. resource management email list. What I'm going to do is put um, information about joining that list on the wiki. Um, it is joining will be moderated just to make sure that we don't get like some weird non-entity joining, non-person entity joining, um, or spammer. But um, there is a, there is a, you know, you can just click to join, and then we'll just make sure that you're a real person. Um, and at this point, I don't know that any of the other SIGs have mailing lists, but that may be something that, again, the, the wiki is a good space to um, look for that type of information. But I will make sure that the main page of the resource management team, which um, currently does not have the link to join, will have the link to join. And I see, oh, Holly had answered that question um, for the various e-lists also is at the openlibraryfoundation.org um, site. Great. Thank you. That's fantastic information. Uh, any other questions? Anybody have anything else before I wrap up? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you all to all our participants for your questions and to all our speakers. Thank you, Peter. Kristen, Kristen, and Dracine, thank you very much. And please feel free to continue this discussion on discuss.folio.org or on Twitter at hashtag Folio Forum. Our next forum will take place in January, um, so stay tuned and look for a forum announcement in the new year. So happy new year to everyone. All right. Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.